let us start with one example first, see how the quantifier, quantifiers are interpreted. Let us take say for each x p x f of x. Suppose this is the formula, we have only one quantifier here and it is very looks very simple right p x f of x. So, f is one function symbol, p is one predicate symbol, it is a binary predicate. Okay. So, we start with one interpretation say let us take natural numbers again and in this we have to tell how this p is interpreted, how f is interpreted. Okay. So, sometimes instead of writing phi here and then writing phi of p is this and phi of f is this, right? we just write say p prime and f prime implicitly telling that these are the predicates uh, to be interpreted that p to be interpreted as this p prime and that f is to be interpreted as this f prime. Okay. We have to tell what this p prime and f prime are. So, let us say f prime means uh, f prime of n, f prime is a unary function symbol, okay. only one argument it has. So, f prime which corresponds to this function symbol should be a unary function, unary partial function let us say. So, we will write this as on n to n, it should be defined on the domain, fine. So, now defined by say f prime of n equal to usually you do not write f prime of n in the beginning, right. When you give this value at n, we write this. So, let us take it this way, where f prime of n is say n plus 4, okay. somehow we have to define it, let us say it is n plus 4. And now, what is this p prime? p prime has to be a binary relation on the natural numbers, right. So, it is a subset of n cross n which subset we have to tell it now, fine. So, which one we will take? Let us take say p prime is less than or equal to. Okay. So, we say m n belongs to p prime if and only if m is less than or equal to n, fine. So, this defines a function phi of f which is n plus 4 and phi of p which is less than or equal to. Okay. Formally we have to write so much, but this is what it says. Now then we will see how this one is interpreted. Okay. So, as it is if you see informally it says that for every natural number n, n is less than or equal to n plus 4 that is what it says. Okay. But then let us look at how the formal semantics takes care of this because we have to go to the states and then from the states we have to come to uh, interpret this quantifier. Okay. So, let us start with one state, state will be starting with a valuation, there is only one variable occurring here, but you can define for other variables that does not matter, they will not come into discussion at all. So, let us say L is one valuation which is under this interpretation. Okay. So, under this interpretation means with of this formula, that formula is also there. So, there is no constant symbols occurring, only one variable is there. We can just give L of x equal to some number, natural number and continue, fine. So, let us say L of x equal to 2, we are just fixing arbitrarily see what happens. Now, we have the states I L. So, I L will satisfy for each x p x f of x, if what happens? You have to go for the definition, if for each element in the domain, we go for the obtained valuations, right, where L will be uh, changing. In this L, x will be fixed to something, some n. So, let us say for each n in natural numbers, I L of x fixed to n, okay. this should satisfy the formula without the quantifier p x f of x. 
is it okay now let's go on writing it for each n in n what about this when does it satisfy p x f x that we have to see so by definition it will satisfy when the corresponding uh, pair belongs to the corresponding predicate right so now x instead of x we have to take l x fixed to n is that okay so once you take l of x fixed to n of x that is n is that okay but we have taken x to any n so the same n will come is that clear so we will be writing n and then l x fixed to n f of x f is interpreted by i directly phi of f right so now this will be phi of f of l x fixed to n of x is that right so that is f prime of l of x l x fixed to n of x right so that is again n belongs to p prime so we have omitted three steps there huh? if you go on slowly writing you have to write l of x fixed to n and so on so this says if and only if for each n in n n is less than or equal to f prime of n which is n plus 4 right which is true which is true in n so we conclude that i l satisfies for each x p x f of x is that clear so now you see how the quantifiers are interpreted so that they are overriding the valuation itself you have never used l of x equal to 2 anywhere okay because ultimately we will be getting to l of x fixed to n and x is being fixed to n the old l of x equal to 2 is of no use is it clear but let us see another example where it is not a sentence see what happens suppose I say for each x p x f of y so here y is a free variable it has not been quantified right with the same interpretation let us try and fix l the same way also fine now we will say i l satisfies for each x p x f of y but we need to interpret y here right because l of y we do not know what it is you have to fix that then only it will come so let us fix so l of y equal to some 100 suppose this is our l which maps x to 2 and y to 100 fine now then this will be so if and only if for each natural number n i l x fixed to n satisfies p x f of y okay if and only if for each n in n now i l means p is less than or equal to n anyway. so x will be taken as n in this new valuation l x fixed to n so that is n then that is your p and what is f of y f is again f prime which will be something plus 4 okay now what is y l x to n of y that will be used right not l l x fixed to n of y but since l and l x fixed to n agree on y that will be same as l of y they can only vary on x because x being fixed all the others are the same as earlier so l x fixed to n of y is equal to l of y right and l of y is equal to what 100 fine so it will be 100 plus this f is working 4 
Is it clear? Or I'll take some more steps. Huh? We'll write one or two more lines. So if we go for that, it will look like if L x fixed to n of x comma L x fixed to n of f of y, right? This belongs to P prime. Right? Then this is so if for each n in n. Now L x to n of x is n. P is less than or equal to. Then we have to evaluate this. Right? L x fixed to n of f of y. So that is again f prime of L x fixed to n of y, right? So that gives for each n in n, n is less than or equal to. Now f prime means just whatever its argument plus four. Now this L x fixed to n of y is L of y, which is equal to hundred. That's why this is hundred. Plus four. Okay, so this doesn't hold. Not true in N. That's why I L does not satisfy for each x p x f of y. Fine, so it doesn't satisfy. But then you see. How this L has been used for y? Earlier it was not being used at all. Now it has to be used because it is occurring free. So once it is free, it will give some particular element in the domain. Is that clear? So this really leads to something. Can you tell why? Well, what you are telling is each time when you choose different value for y, so your L changes. For different valuations, the corresponding state may or may not satisfy, but it has to be same. So the interpretation itself does not interpret directly this open formula, it is a state which interprets, right. But in the other case, when it is a closed formula sentence, whatever L you would have chosen does not matter the interpretation directly interpret the sentence right even if it is defined through the valuations finally it doesn't matter the quantifiers really override these valuations right so then it tells something about difference between closed formulas and open formulas you really need states for open formulas you may not need states for the closed formulas or sentences right and the clue is the set of free variables occurring in it Fine. So, suppose you imagine there are there is a formula uh, where you have some free variables and these valuations L or L prime let us take two valuations which agree on all the free variables. Then what will happen finally, if I L satisfies will I L prime satisfy and so on right. This is what these two examples hint at they should be it looks they should be right and that is exactly your relevance lemma which says that whatever relevant to that sentence you need to concern about that other things you can forget. Okay. So, let us formulate it. Let A be a formula and let us write V subscript A as or the set of all free variables of A. Okay. 
okay. and let us take i to be an interpretation. You may write this i as on the ordered pair with domain and the map say i is d phi an interpretation. And let us take two valuations L, L prime valuations under this interpretation I. So, what we say that if these two valuations agree on V of A, right, all the free variables, then this would evaluate the same way, that is what it says. Okay. Suppose L of x equal to L prime of x for each x in V a. Then the ensuing states I L and I L prime should evaluate the formula A the same way, right. So, I L satisfies A if and only I L prime satisfies A. This is what we conjecture. Okay. So, how do we prove this? Well, it seems there is nothing else but induction, hmm? because our semantics itself is defined inductively, starting from the base cases, where there is no connectives, no quantifiers, and then slowly introducing connectives and quantifiers. Okay. So, let us have the proof on by induction on the number of connectives and quantifiers in A taken together, right. So, suppose that is new A. So, we use induction on new A. So, this is the number of connectives and quantifiers in A. So, it is really number of occurrences of, huh? it is not number of, there can there may be only one connective occurring 100 times. So, in that case 100 will be contribution to new A, huh? not one. So, you should write number of occurrences. Okay. So, what is the basis case? No connectives, no quantifiers. Then how does it look like? A look like? Yes. There is no connecting, no quantifier. Huh? Beginning. Huh? Or it can be bottom. Right? Or it can be of the form S equal to T. Right? But before that, it may be some proposition without anything, zero array, P is zero array, right. Or it can be P of T 1 to T n, right. These are the basis cases. Is that okay? That is how we have given the syntax of the language. So, it can be top, it can be bottom, it can be some zero array predicate proposition itself or it can be binary with equality or can be any n array predicates, right. There might be function symbols inside this T 1 to T n, they are terms, okay. but no connectives, no quantifiers that is important, that is our new A. So, new A is 0, that is our basis case. So, now in all these cases, just try to see what is the conclusion. I L and I L prime should evaluate the same way. Is it happening? This case is easy. I L of top is always same, whatever L, whatever I E may be, right. So, that is satisfied. This is also okay. What about this? Propositions? Huh? There is no variable at all. No variable at all. So, L or L prime does not matter, they evaluate the same way. Is it okay? 
Now, what about a c equal to t? Variables can occur, right? But also constants can occur. But constants will not give any problem because l of any constant equal to l prime of the constant. Constants are interpreted directly by i, right? L of those things come from the definition of phi itself. So l of any constant c equal to l prime of any constant c equal to phi of c, right? They directly give it to the elements of the domain. So constants give no problem. Variables can, right? Okay. So if a is equal to t, and the variables are interpreted the same way, so l and l prime interpret the same way. Is it okay? There again, it is an inductive step on the number of variables occurring in S and T, right? So that is again another inductive step if you do it formally. But that is clear. So if there are variables in X, say one variable X is occurring, then what happens? L of S during the evaluation of L of S, which element is it? You have to go for L of X. Then all those instances of L of X you can Substitute by L prime of x because they are same, right? So finally, it will come to the same element. And finally, S equal to t is interpreted as the equality itself, the same as relation. Fine. So it will come to this way. I L satisfies S equal to t if and only if L of S equal to L of t. Okay. Because this identity or equality uh, symbol is interpreted as equal to in the concrete domain, whatever your domain D is. Then this will give L prime of S equal to L prime of T. Since on the variables they are interpreting the same way, whatever be the no variables, whether it is originally quantified or not quantified in A, we are not bothered. Right, there is no quantification here, of course. Then this happens if and only if I L prime satisfies S equal to T. So this case is clear. What about P T one to T n? It is similar to this. Instead of equality, we will have P here. Right? Okay. Let's do it. Just you have to write some more lines. We will start with I L satisfies P of T1 to T n if uh, L of T1 to L of T n belongs to phi of P. Right? If they are so related as the corresponding relation to P, right? And then next two lines similar things. L of each term equal to L prime of each term. So you just go to L prime of T1. L prime of Tn belongs to phi of P, and that's exactly what we wanted. I L prime satisfies P of T1 to Tn. Is that clear? So basic step is clear. Now for the induction step. Suppose number of occurrence of connectives is k or up to k, the statement holds. Then for k plus one, whether it holds or not. So now, if it is having number of occurrence of connectives and quantifiers taken together, k plus one, how will it look like? Now again structure, because that's how we are defined our formulas. So then that structure will have. Uh, not in it, not is one connective possibly, or any binary connective, right? Or it will have for each x for some variable x, and then a formula, or there is x, and another formula, right? So we'll essentially get four cases. So now in the induction step, we may have a equal to not b, or a will be say b and some binary connective c. Okay, so this star may be in and or conditional or biconditional. One of these, of course, with parentheses. Hmm. 
or it can be in the form there is x b where b is another formula x is a variable okay or it may be in the form a equal to for each x b one of this four possible then in each case let us see now if a is having k plus 1 as a new new of a is k plus 1 then new of b is k one connective less and if a is b star c then b c will have new less than or equal to k that is why you need strong induction right you assume for all less than or equal to k and in this case connectives may be same but one quantifier is less so in b again new of b will be less than or equal to k right equal to k here similarly for each x b will have again equal to k right so you can use induction hypothesis on this and then go for the induction step that's what we will be doing okay so let's take not b case if a equal to not b then you start just like this and use the definition of satisfaction so say case a we will say il satisfies not b if and only if il does not satisfy b by definition right now use induction hypothesis b has only new less than or equal to k so our conclusion holds il prime does not satisfy b then if and only if il prime satisfies not b it's too mechanical huh. similarly case b just the connective propositional rules now let us see the quantification suppose a is there exist x b now you say il satisfies there exist x b this happens if and only if what is the definition for some element in the domain right so for some d in d il x to d x fix to d satisfies b is that okay that's what it is now how to use induction hypothesis on this that is our point okay so now what happens l x to d right this new variable x is occurring in b probably right we don't know exactly and it might be occurring free there but in a it was not free it was there exist x b it is in the scope of that quantifier there exist x so it was not free right so we observe that the free variables of b can be an additional free variables of a union x and we have l and l prime agree on the formula then you can use it right is it clear our induction hypothesis is on this statement where we have l and l prime agree on va right so that means va only l and l prime will agree what about this x we need that now to apply the induction hypothesis see the problem hmm? it is not straight forward here so for x also you have to see what is happening right now let's see <coughs> l x fix to d of any variable in a we are not worried only for x we are verifying if you take any variable y that of course comes as it is then of x is equal to d okay now what about l prime x to d that is also d okay though l and l prime may not agree we don't know what they are but l 
x fix to d l prime x fix to d they agree fine. So, now we are not going to see whether l and l prime agree, but whether these two are agreeing or not even on the other variables because there we are applying the induction hypothesis right. So, you have to verify of these valuations on any y, but that is not difficult because l x fix to d of any variable y is equal to l of y and l prime x fix to d of y is also equal to l prime of y and l x l y and l prime y agree right. So, these two also agree fine therefore, these two valuations agree on all the free variables of b. So, we can apply induction hypothesis on l and l prime when x fix to d not directly on l l prime is it clear. We will write it again. So, now we verify L x fix to d of y where x is not equal to y or let us say y is not equal to x. Okay. So, this y equal to L of y by definition because x is only fixed to d all others are as they were. So, this is L of y and L of y equal to L prime of y, why? Because if y is not equal to x and y belongs to free variables of b, then y belongs to free variables of a, right. V of b is a subset of V of a union x. So, here we give a comment because y belongs to V a due to this. Then this is equal to L prime of x fix to d of y only x is fixed to d others are same right. So, that means L x fix to d and L prime x fix to d these two valuations agree on V b right on V b because in V b you can have free variables from a or x, x we have verified and free variables of a are here which are not x, is that ok. So, these two valuations agree, then use induction hypothesis here hypothesis to conclude I L x fix to d satisfies b if and only if I L prime of x fix to d satisfies b. Okay. Nu of b is less than or equal to k that is why you are able to use it all those three are required. So, now once that is done we come back to this statement right this says for some d in d I L prime of x fix to d satisfies b right. Therefore, I L prime satisfies their existence b, proof ends there. So, let us take one nice uh, corollary of this. Suppose a is a sentence, what do we conclude from relevance lemma? Huh? No free variables, So, we will be starting with a sentence, let a be a sentence. So, in that case free variable of a is empty, right, v a is empty, there is no free variable. Then any two valuations you take l and l prime, they will agree on v a, where there is no case of difference, right. So, once they agree your conclusion will hold. So, conclusion is I l satisfies a if and only if I L prime satisfies A for any valuation L, right. So, now let us write it, let I be an interpretation and let L be a valuation under I, then I L satisfies A if and only if 
if you take any other valuation L prime, then I L prime also will satisfy A. Right? So, there we will write I itself satisfies A. Okay? We will give the definition now. The definition says I satisfies A if and only if I L satisfies A for every valuation or every state I L under A. So, we have to only define satisfaction for from the state's point of view, how a state satisfies a formula. Now, we are defining how an interpretation satisfies a formula. So, an interpretation satisfies a formula if and only if all states under the interpretation satisfy it. Okay? So, this now says any two states you take, they either satisfy or does not satisfy, do not satisfy together. So, if one of the states satisfies, then everyone satisfies. Conversely, if everyone satisfies, then that one also satisfies, right. So, this is what it says. That means, you do not have to go to the states to interpret the formulas, which are closed, right. A sentence can be interpreted exactly by an interpretation, no states are required. This is what our intuition was, huh? and we are there now, okay. So, even if you say there is a sentence and there is a state model of it, it is equivalent to telling there is a sentence, it has a model. Clear? There is a nice corollary of this again. You can see that if you take any interpretation of a sentence, either the interpretation satisfies it or interpretation satisfies its negation. It should be clear from this now. Okay? So, as a corollary, we will have this. Let A be a sentence and I be an interpretation. Okay. Then either I satisfies A or I satisfies not A. For a formula, it need not happen, right? Well, we will come to that. Now, see how to prove this. It is because you take any state L, I L, okay, take a valuation under this interpretation. Now, I L either satisfies A or it satisfies not A by definition for the states, right? Okay? So, now due to relevance lemma for the sentences, I L satisfies A if and only if I satisfies A. So, just substitute both of them that proves it. Okay? But, it says something more, proof is easy, there is nothing. It says that if you take any interpretation, it either satisfies the sentence or it makes the sentence false, one of them will happen. But, if an arbitrary formula is there, not a sentence, it may do neither. Right? Okay? So, that means, what we are telling is, if x is an open formula, then it may happen that that neither i satisfies x nor i satisfies not x, that can happen. Okay. Example to show this, we need an example. So, definitely we are going for an open formula. For a sentence, if you go, you go, do not get the answer. So, now we have to consider one open formula where there is at least one free variable, it means that. So, there is a free variable, let us say Px, right. There can be more also. So, suppose x is the only free variable. Now, can you construct an interpretation where uh, that interpretation neither satisfies p x nor satisfies not p x. Well, first domain. Huh? So, let us take i equal to 
you are thinking in natural numbers ok so p only 0 will be excluded if you take positive integers only 0 is excluded let us try so say p is uh, z plus that is our p fine well it does not so exactly so let us write say p prime and p prime is z plus set up all positive integers now p x how p x is interpreted it is never interpreted right you need a state to interpret it l of x should be specified so what is l of x 1 case let us take 0, another let us say L prime of x is 1, okay. then I L satisfies P x if and only if what does it say L of x belongs to P prime if and only if 0 belongs to z plus which is not so, huh? which is not true. So, we conclude I L does not satisfy P x, then I also does not satisfy P x, because by definition I satisfies a formula if and only if every state under it satisfies it, there is one state which does not satisfy it. Next, what about I L prime? Hmm? Let us verify I L prime satisfies P x if what happens? L prime of x belongs to P prime, right. So, L prime of x is 1. So, 1 belongs to z plus, it is so. so this is not the example, right. Well, at least one more element we need which should not be there. So, we can construct P prime to be everything bigger than or equal to 2, right. Then take L prime x equal to 1. Is that okay? Or to see it better way, let us take z plus as uh, sorry, not here p prime, uh, this is sufficient. See, our aim is to show that i does not satisfy p x. Now, how do we show? At least for one state under i, i l should not satisfy a. Huh? We want to say in this example. That is for I L. So, I does not satisfy. It is again P x. We want for not P x. We want for not P x now. Okay. So, okay. let us try that way. We want to show I L does not satisfy not p x this is what we want ok this is what we want here we have shown that i l does not satisfy p x now we want to show i l does not satisfy not p x right but that will not happen let us take i l prime because l prime x we have taken as 1 ok so let us try i l prime does not satisfy not p x is it true that is what we want to verify so, this happens if I L prime satisfies P x. Not P x. So, I L prime satisfies P x. So, this happens if and only if L prime of x belongs to P prime. Right. So, this gives if and only if L prime of x equal to 1. So, 1 belongs to z plus which is true over ok which holds so that serves right. So, this shows I L prime does not satisfy not P x therefore, I does not satisfy not P x right. So, both the things are done i does not satisfy p x and this from this we conclude i does not satisfy not p x this is what we wanted 
Clear? Neither of them is satisfied. So, this gives us another way of looking at the open formulas. See, for the closed formulas, you do not need the states, interpretations are enough. In fact, if you read the uh, closed formulas or sentences directly through I, then you get one fact statement in your domain. Right? Now, you have to verify whether that is true or false according to the mechanism of the domain itself. Right? This is the procedure, but then if it is open formula, you cannot do that you have to go for the states that is why you have done it. But once this is done for the sentences you have another alternative then you can think of getting some sentence from the open formula and try to see what happens. Huh? See suppose I have p x here x is one free variable this is open formula. Now, I may consider two sentences. Okay. This I can interpret in any domain I like, this also I can interpret as a sentence, but this is not a sentence, it cannot be interpreted as a sentence. So, I do not know the truth of it, but these two I can interpret, I know whether they are true or false in any domain given. Fine. Now, from the truth of this, can I conclude something about the truth of P x? Well, up to some extent we can conclude this is what we will discuss next time. Okay. Is it clear? So, what we have done today is only relevance lemma and then we concluded that it is meaningful to define when an interpretation becomes a model of a sentence, but not of a closed formula, uh, not of an open formula. Now, to consider open formulas we have one suggestion here that either you take for every x of all those things or there is x of all those things then try to see what happens right so this we keep it open now next time we will discuss